This tiny cart right here, this unassuming, easy to hide, easy to get out of the way cart, is everything that you need to potentially run an entire YouTube channel, YouTube career, or especially a TikTok channel, which is kind of what this was built for, without taking up a whole lot of space, giving you full freedom to roll it around anywhere and use any backdrop you like, as well as get it out of the way should you have company over. You don't really want your content creation life to take over your living space or your working space. This is super simple to set up, kind of impressively so, but it's something you would potentially never need to tweak again. And I really like setups like this. And in fact, this has been my main TikTok setup for a while, albeit I took a brief hiatus from TikTok, but most of my vertical format videos were actually made using this setup, and I kind of want to talk about it. I'm Plus Vox, the stream professor, and we have thousands of videos at this point helping you master your tech and build better streams be it learning streaming software like obs studio or xsplit getting the you know picking the best webcam or microphone or what have you or building entire stream setups or in this case video creation setups and that is what we're looking at today this one requires no software because it's all recorded in the camera this is my little tiktok cart that i use and really appreciate because it has everything i need to make tiktok content or vertical format content or even horizontal form content i have made a couple normal videos with this or at least introduced them all self-contained and theoretically all powered off of a single v-mount battery down here that you can then just charge on its own so the centerpiece of this rig is the roly cart itself that it's on it's actually effectively a wheeled c-stand available from impact they're about 100 bucks i own three of them at this point that's not a flex uh, because they are so useful and I use them for just about everything. In fact, my main key light that's lighting me right now is on one of these stands and I have another one that holds my bounce usually and things like that. So that is the main part of this. This is one of the most incredible pieces of gear that you can buy for your setup, I think, especially if you have a bigger space or if you have space where you want your setup to easily be able to move or be moved out of your way, even if it's smaller. Uh, something like this on it's got big thick caster wheels they have brakes and it's since it's set up like a c stand or a standard tripod uh, it's fairly rugged like you're not gonna knock this thing down without falling over onto it or something and even then that would be a little dubious so it has a basic baby stud uh pin at the top that you can mount lights to or get extra arms to come off of or convert to a tripod mount if you wanted your camera to actually go up top here downing the top of the stand i actually have a light panel this is a uh, kind of flat edge lit LED panel. It's one that I got before the Elgato key light came out, even though it's the same concept. This one's from Draycast. It is the DRSLR400B, which is a hilarious name, uh, but it provides a nice, soft, even diffused light to make you look good. I, I, I have absolutely loved the results out of this. I don't use it as a key light all too often, but to use it for this kind of setup, it actually works really well. So that's just mounted directly onto the stud that comes out of the top of the stand, because that's how these lights are designed to mount on normal light stands, and it works perfectly. I can tune the color temperature. Currently it runs off of two Sony uh, NPF L-style batteries, uh, but you can actually, if you get the right conversion, depending on what LED panel you have, a lot of them can run off of power that you could run to the V-mount. But for now, I actually do have this running off its own battery as well. So that's another point of charging, but you could also plug it into a wall if you want to roll it near an outlet, or th there are alternatives. This is just the way that I have it rigged at this point in time. Moving down, we have an impact super clamp and an impact uh, just basic small arm here that shoots out of it, it attaches through to the stud of this clamp, and then it has a basic spigot on the top that has a quarter 20 thread. We've got a super basic, this is probably newer or something. It's garbage, it falls off if you put like a super heavy cinema camera on it, but for a DSLR or mirrorless camera, perfectly rock solid ball head, and then an Arca Swiss quick release plate and quick release uh, base here that mounts the camera. Now the camera I'm using on this because it was an extra camera at this point, which I realize how ridiculous to say this is an extra camera, but that's not the point. The extra camera was the Sony a7S II. This used to be my main face cam for my desktop webcam setups. However, the autofocus on it uh, led me to look elsewhere for my results with it. And so I have it mounted here. Now currently I have a Viltrox Canon EF to Sony E-mount adapter on it to use uh, a Young Nuo 14 millimeter wide angle lens because I want that super wide angle so I can still cut me out vertically for TikToks and vertical form content without losing a ton of resolution or anything like that, which allows me to have full flexibility to move around the shot and still cut me out as needed, but still show 
my sick background in the background if I would like as well. Now, there are two limit, limiting factors of this camera. One is amplified by the lens adapter here, but the two limiting factors of this camera, first and foremost, it does not have a flip out screen. It only has a flip up screen. So in order to see yourself, you either need to run it to an HDMI monitor, which actually removes the face detect HDMI or face detect autofocus on this when you have it run over HDMI, especially, or, well, if you're recording in camera. If you hooked it up to a video recorder monitor, like an Atomos Ninja Inferno, Atomos Ninja V, what have you, you could do that, but I didn't, I couldn't justify buying another Ninja V for this specific setup here. That's $500, $600. Uh, so I'm recording in camera, and if you run it to a monitor while recording in camera, you lose the good autofocus. So instead, I have a super cheap, bought this off eBay. I don't even think it has a brand name. It is UU Rig. <laughs> it is effectively a mirror, like you would have on a telescope or a periscope in a, in a submarine or something. It sits on top of the cold shoe mount of the camera. It does give you another cold shoe on top if you need it and points a mirror down. So then you just flip up the screen and it shines the screen into the mirror. So you effectively have a flip out screen. It's just mirrored. It's the dumbest solution ever, but it just works. So that's the camera setup. And I, I'll show you some results here of what you get with that. So while I didn't like the autofocus at my desk webcam setup, there was too much going on. It kept hooking on the wrong things. This kind of I'm right up on top of the camera setup would actually be an ideal scenario for the autofocus to work. But I don't have a whole lot of Sony glass. I'm getting more and more Sony bodies, but I don't honestly own a lot of glass. My entire lens ecosystem that I'm invested in is the Canon ecosystem. And so, I didn't want to buy a lens for this. I was trying to use parts that I already had laying around and things like that. So I'm using a Canon EF mount lens on here and one that doesn't have amazing continuous autofocus performance in the first place. So that combined with translating the autofocus through the Viltrox adapter combined with the outdated autofocus of the A7S II, uh, the autofocus results I'll show you on screen here are a little too distracting to actually leave enabled. So I use the zoom mode for focus checking and focus peaking on the camera itself and just manual focus since I get to be right up here on the lens and get me a focus and record my take and that's perfectly fine. The a7S II is a wonderful camera. You can actually, the value you get for it in terms of how cheap it is these days is absolutely bonkers. But if you're looking for something that has good autofocus performance, especially like it's still one that performs great, especially compared to the first a7S, but in terms of the modern cameras, especially from Sony, like the, I'm using the uh, a6400 right now, and the autofocus on this is just awesome. It's a little outdated these days, but if you can get it, it's cheap. Uh, I will actually show you a result of what the a6400 looks like on this rig as well. So this is what the Sony a6400 looks and sounds like with the TikTok kit. The difference here being an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage being that you have the flip up screen so I can actually look up and see what the heck I'm doing. Well, Sony finally got their heads out of, their, out of their butts and made that. The disadvantage being that being a crop sensor camera, uh, with a, I'm already on a 16 millimeter lens. It doesn't get too much wider than this and I'm a much more cropped in. So I would have to stand like really far back, which then affects audio and lighting production. So you will end up with some much more close up shots if you are cropping for vertical. You could alternatively just rotate the camera. I'm hand holding it right now because the ball head does not want to support this. Uh, it's mainly the way I have it rigged. You could actually make it work. Uh, but this is what it looks like to have the A6400 mounted vertically if you wanted to do vertical TikToks. This may be the way to go for some people, uh, but I still prefer, since I make content for Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, whatever, I like having the original wide view that I can then use for, you know, standard video and cut it in without having a vertical slice and then cut the vertical slice out for the content platforms that need it. But the choice is yours, really. Rock. Metal, heavy metal, thrash, gent. Royalty free, stream safe, DMCA free music for your streams, videos, whether you're on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, doesn't matter. We've got it here at backingtrack.gg. We cover a variety of rock and metal genres that most streaming services typically don't provide and provide it available freely for you to use in your content. You can get free access to the streams over on any major streaming platform or at backingtrack.gg. We're also on Pretzel Rocks and you can get free downloads of not only the tracks but the stems to remix them for yourself at our Discord server at discord.gg slash evilsvox. Rock on and let us know what you make with it. In terms of audio, you want a microphone that you can get close to. You could use a lav kit like I'm using right now. I don't know that that would be the best idea because the goal here is to have everything on the cart. And that's what's so cool about this is I have a tiny little shotgun mic just mounted on this little arm here. So this is actually the Elgato solid arm. Uh, they released a 
Elgato is the company that makes lots of capture cards and streaming oriented products. They have what's called a multi mount, which mounts on the desk and provides like a light stand kind of thing. Uh, well, they released what they called a solid arm, which is just a basic clamping arm, just like the impact one I have up here uh, that is meant to attach to their multi mount, but it can attach to just about anything. So I have it mounted to the light stand. It is super rock solid and mounted to that is this tiny little microphone. Uh, and that gets the shotgun microphone as close to my mouth as possible without me blowing plosives into it uh, to get the clearest audio possible because that's basic physics of microphone use. The closer you get your mic to your subject, the better it'll be generally speaking. And that's just routed into the camera. Now the microphone I'm currently using is an Avermedia shotgun mic. Uh, I'll have the exact product like listing on screen uh, for you to check out, but you can't really buy this anymore. They discontinued it pretty quickly. However, I have found its performance to be insane. The It was only like a hundred bucks and the sound quality you get out of it for this tiny little shotgun, as long as you have it close to your subject and not on the camera body really far away, is actually pretty stellar. So you can use any shotgun mic you want. I recommend some of the cheaper ones from Deity Microphones. They make some really good stuff. Obviously, you've got the Rode Video Micro Pros and all of that as well, if you'd like. But the goal is to get it as close to you as possible without popping up in the frame. And especially with this wider angle lens, it'll start to get in the frame a little bit. So I have kept it a little bit lower, but still pointed up at my you know, neck chin area, which is ideal for audio to get crisp, clear audio and it sounds great. Twitch myth busting. There's been a lot of TikToks and tweets going around lately suggesting that Twitch partners and affiliates have access to different bit rates to stream at than normal streamers or that partners have access to higher bit rates than affiliates. And this is not true. That is a myth. Coming out of the camera as we move down is a dummy battery converter. You, there are plenty of dummy batteries you can get for any camera, but for the Sony cameras specifically, the A6400, A7S2, etc., you can get ones that terminate in a USB plug. So you can plug it into just about any USB port to provide enough power for the camera. And as a workaround, so I wasn't constantly fiddling with the camera battery here and having to charge that and had something that would last for say a week straight of me turning it off and on at random points in time in order to record whatever content I wanted over time, I actually ended up going with a V-mount battery. These are big cinema batteries and they make them much smaller than this. I just picked up a Kame TV one for another camera rig. I'll have it linked below. That's like a fraction of the size. Uh, but these are big cameras meant to power beefy cinema cameras and lights and things like that. And they come with what's called a D-tap connector on the side. And this one actually has a USB plug on the side as well. So I have it clamped to the light stand with a basic V-mount clamp that you can buy super cheap and USB run into it. And I would still recommend unplugging it if you want your battery to last as long as possible while everything's turned off because it'll still pull a tiny bit of charge. But overall, everything except for the light is powered off of this one battery that lasts freaking forever so you can record weeks of TikTok content to it. Just record it to the memory card, pop it out, go plop it in my computer. Audio is already synced up since it's run into the camera. You don't need to do two system audio and crazy audio recorders or something for content you're making for TikTok or Twitter or what have you. And then I just have a sandbag on the uh, light stand, mainly because I needed it up off the floor and out of the way, but also just to keep it weighed down and pretty sturdy. And this is a super easy kit that anyone can put together without a whole lot of technical knowledge, especially following a video like this, where like I said, you could set this up, have a nice standing workstation that you keep out of the way, or even if people ask about it, like it's super minimal compared to, you know, most people's RGB clad video setups, and still be able to make videos pretty much wherever you want. Obviously the physics of the acoustics in your room and the noise treatment and whatever will still play a role, but this is an insanely powerful setup that you could make videos and like you start with your phone maybe and a microphone compatible with it and then you upgrade later because investing in your gear in terms of like grip gear, your light stands, your lights, your microphones and things like that are always a better investment than your actual camera body. Uh, so you could start with your phone and just get the light stands and stuff like that and later on upgrade to a mirrorless camera or a camcorder or something and just run your entire career for this. And if you're one of those people who doesn't want to be a gearhead like me and constantly upgrade and swap out gear, then this can be what you keep for pretty much ever. And no one's really going to complain about your video quality. It looks freaking great. So I have links to all the products and all the things that I use in this video that I can, as well as alternative suggestions in the description down below. I think this is an awesome setup that anyone can use. And super shout out to Caleb Pike from DSLR Video Shooter for leading me on to these impact uh, rolling stands because these have been a lifesaver in my setup and I have pretty much everything on wheels now because it is such a clutch setup. If you're interested in how this would work specifically for mobile users, I will have an alternate take of this video focusing on building this around 
around a smartphone coming in a future video. So get subscribed so you don't miss that and enable notifications. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, join us on Discord, discord.gg slash ebosvox, so we can help you out, get you set up if you'd like. Hit the like button, subscribe, and be kind. Rewind.